Okay, buckle up, because we've got a mountain of OpenAI dev day to unpack. And wow, the energy was off the charts this year. Like the whole AI world just leveled up. Yeah, this one felt different, right? Not just product drops, but a real sense of things are changing fast. And the numbers back it up. Apps built on OpenAI tripled in the last year alone. So where do we even start? Let's talk O1. That was the big headline grabber. OpenAI is calling it a new model series, but honestly- So they redefine what AI means. Exactly. This isn't just incremental, it's the reasoning thing. Previous AIs, powerful as they were, they struggled with that. They crunched data, but didn't really think, like in that logic puzzle example they showed. The tragedy one, right. Seeing O1 break that down step by step, mm -hmm. it was methodical, like a human analyzing, not just pattern matching. Even the name O1 sounds simple, but that's deceptive, like calling the first car just a wheeled thing. And it's already out there in the wild. That company, Cognition, building the AI software engineer, Devin, they used O1 for tweet sentiment analysis, but... Hit a snag. Everyone loves a good AI hiccup story. Devin needed data from a browser. Couldn't get it directly, so it switched to using the API instead. That adaptation, that's O1 thinking on its feet. See, that's the thing. It's not just following orders. It's understanding intent. Like, how do I achieve the goal even if the path changes? Human programmer stuff. And the case text example, legal AI, O1, caught a tiny error in a document. Another AI missed it completely. Huge for fields where that precision matters. Oh, and don't forget that demo O1 building an iPhone app live on stage. That's pretty slick, yeah. But what stuck with me was Romain, the presenter, he said working with O1 is like having a thought partner who instantly gets your vision. The speed that implies, that's exciting and maybe a little scary. Run it down. No. It's pushing the boundaries of what we thought possible, that's for sure. And then there's the whole multimodality thing, right? AI that's not stuck in text land, it's doing images, video, mm -hmm. voice especially is huge. Right. Last year at Dev Day, voice was like a side note, pre-recorded stuff. Yeah. This year, with that real-time API, whole different ballgame. You could feel the energy shift in the room when they <laughs> yeah. asked that. Actual cheers. Developers have been waiting for this. Oh, yeah. They brought Romain back out, built a whole event assistant app live using the real-time API. And not just voice commands. He was using it for everything. Pulling data, code snippets, even designing JSON schemas. It was wild. And here's a subtle thing I appreciated. OpenAI knows that writing good prompts for AI is hard. So they built prompt generation right into the API. Small detail, but makes it way more accessible. It's like they're not just building powerful AI, they're building power tools anyone can use. Exactly. And then to really show off the real-time API, Romain demos this fictional travel app, Wanderlust. Wanderlust. Okay, this thing was smooth. Switching between text and voice, understanding requests like, find me a highly rated Italian place in the French Quarter, open past 10 p.m., even integrated with Twilio to make the reservation. Think about the implications. Mm -hmm. Surgeons getting info hands-free during procedures, pilots interacting with air traffic control. Or even just, you're cooking, hands are messy, you can ask for a recipe, get instructions, conversions, all without touching your phone. And this isn't sci-fi, it's happening. They showcase companies already using it. Healthify, for super realistic health coaching. Speak the language app. Now it's full-on back-and-forth conversation practice. It's amazing, but we got to talk practicality too, because none of this matters if it costs a fortune, right? Right, and OpenAI seems to get that. Accessibility isn't just technical, it's financial too. So let's talk about the less flashy, but equally important stuff. Fine-tuning costs. Fine-tuning? Sounds kind of technical. What's it all about? So picture this. You take a general AI model, super powerful, but kind of broad, right? And then you train it on your specific data, like hyper-focused training. That's fine-tuning. Okay, starting to get the picture. How about a real-world example? Grab the Southeast Asian tech company. They used it for their self-driving system, taught it to spot traffic signs, lane markings, a whole nine yards. Mm. Self-driving cars, high stakes. Absolutely. And here's the kicker. Mm. They did it with just 100 images. Fine-tuning used to be this whole big data PhD level thing. Open AI is making it something anyone can use. So it's like, I've got this supercomputer, but I want it to specialize in, I don't know, ancient Sumerian texts. This makes that possible. Exactly. And speaking of making things possible, we got to talk cost, right? Open AI has been busy on that front too. Oh yeah, they've slashed prices like crazy. Some models are practically free compared to a couple years ago. And they've got this cool new feature, prompt caching. Prompt caching, tell me more. Okay. So say you're feeding the AI similar prompts over and over. Prompt caching, it recognizes that, and boom, 50% discount on those tokens. Clever. 
Small change, big savings for developers. It's like OpenAI is on a mission to make AI accessible to everyone. Right. And then there's model distillation, basically mm -hmm. taking a big, complex AI model and shrinking it down, making it more efficient. Okay. So instead of needing a room full of servers, I can run this AI on my phone. Exactly. OpenAI is releasing new tools to make this easier, and that's a game changer. Think personalized medicine, AI on your wristwatch, who knows? It's mind-blowing how fast this field's moving. OpenAI is right there at the forefront, making these crazy, powerful tools available to everyone. It really does feel like we're on the edge of something huge, you know? No doubt. And the crazy part is, this is just the beginning. Who knows what we'll be talking about at next year's Dev Day? That's the right question, isn't it? If O1 can code, design, make calls, what's next? Thanks for diving deep with us into this open AI news, everyone. What a time to be following AI.